Hello whiskey friends, welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm your host Mark and this is whiskey review number 141. The Macallan, this is edition number two. Uh, edition number two is the follow-up to edition number one, obviously, and this was uh, quite a hot seller, apparently. Now, if you're looking closely, I've already got one poured, and we'll talk about why in a minute. Let me get this poured. That's more than enough, maybe 25 milliliters or so. So the Macallan um, Highland Single Malt. Uh, could also be considered a space cider, although it seems like they just stick with the Highland um, term for the brand. Anyway, uh, it's 48.2% ABV. It is natural in color, as all Macallans are. And, um, well, I think that it is unchill filtered, although it doesn't say so on the label. And I can figure out why, and I'll let you think about what that what that reason might be. Now, why am I? Why do I say that I think it's unchill filtered? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's because here we have uh, two of the same whiskey. This one I just poured. You saw it. You witnessed that. And this one was poured a while ago, uh, and has water and a bit of time. Uh, I've added a bit, a, a little bit of water, probably taking it down to. 30, 35, maybe 40% at the most. Um, okay, now, can you see anything different about these two? Uh, the neat, uh, the neat pour is absolutely crystal clear, whereas the one with water and time is hazy. It's cloudy. And uh, this is known as Scottish mist, which I've said before. But you may be watching for the first time. Uh, this normally happens only when the whiskey is unchill filtered um, and um, only when, I shouldn't say only when, uh, it's possible to have very light chill filtration and still receive, still receive, still have the same result. Um, anyway, so unchill filtered whiskeys, when they are brought down to the ABV of around about 40%, less than 46 anyway, uh, they get cloudy. So there you have it. So in my mind, um, the only reason why this happens for the Macallan is because it's unchill filtered. And I've tried it with other Macallans and it just doesn't happen. And the other ones are bottled at 40% that I've tried. Anyway, uh, we're gonna save that one so we can compare the taste with water and time, okay? All right, now this is my third Macallan. Uh, if you're interested in uh, the history of Macallan, you can go back and look at, uh, it might have been somewhere around number eight or 10, perhaps. That was the 12 year old Sherry matured. And then just maybe about a month and a half ago, two months ago, I reviewed the double cask 12 year old, the newest one. All right, anyway. So let's get on to the nose for second edition. And we'll talk a little bit about what this is while we're doing the tasting. All right, anyway, before we get onto the nose, we'll have a very short advertisement right here. Welcome back, the Macallan, second edition. Let's check out the nose. Very potent. Very, very sherried. So there's lots of sherry influence here. There's also a lot of spice. Probably most people would consider this to be a sherry bomb. Although it's got something else in there. It's got something a little bit different. And the reason is, is because uh, this is a collaboration between uh, Bob Delgarno, the Macallan's master whiskey maker, and some chefs, the Roca brothers, who founded um, El Celer de Can Roca, which was twice voted the best restaurant in the world. So those brothers went and handpicked some casks for this blend. And um, well, there were three different types of casks, a butt, hogshead, and a puncheon. Um, the butt, well, uh, it's likely sherry butt, although that could be American oak. Uh, the hogshead, this is a combination cask 
so I've been told, uh, reassembled from various casks, uh, larger in size than normal, and it's 21%, and then 27% puncheon. Now, this would be strictly European oak, I do believe. Anyway, so a mix of European and American oak, also a mix of first fill and second fill. So the first fill will give that a lot of, if it's sherry, a lot of fruitiness. And if it's bourbon, it's going to give it a lot of vanilla and a lot of cinnamon and spice. Uh, second fill, uh, you'll get more of, um, well, over a, uh, if it's very, very well aged, you'll get more of uh, what happens to whiskey as it ages. Uh, and a little bit more spirit forward, a little bit less wood forward, uh, and more interaction between um, uh, the wood and the spirit, and less of the, uh, the content, that first fill content. There's a little bit of content in that wood. All right, anyway, as you let that settle down, you really will smell a lot of fresh fruits, fresh red fruits, Mix in with some dried and uh, a good a lot of spices as well. A um, little bit of orange, which is a bit different for the Macallan, I believe. And what do my notes tell me? Well, I write here classic Mac Sherry, although it grows with time. So when you first smell it, right poured from the bottle, uh, you may say, hmm, I don't smell the Macallan very much. But as you give it time, that really, really comes out. Okay, and I wrote here dark grain toast with red jam, be it strawberry or raspberry, or maybe a mix. Herbals, what kind of herbals? Some grassy notes. Some fresh basil, perhaps. Um, and I write here, it's fresh and uh, it is very bright. So when you smell that, it has the same effect of a mint, well, a akin to a mint for your mouth, but rather for your nose. Really freshens up um, the nasal passages. I can't think of any other way to say that. Uh, fresh red fruits, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, uh, some Concord grapes. I wrote also here orange, a little bit of vanilla, although that diminishes with time. And um, with time, I get some spicy uh, wood or originated notes, such as clove, nutmeg, and a bit of cedar. Um, anyway, very, very nice nose. I think this is more complex and more interesting than the 12 year old Macallan, the sherry matured. I also think it's more interesting than uh, the double cask 12 year old. And yeah, the more you smell it, the more you get these really deep red fruitiness uh, effect effects coming out. So there's a strawberry jam I'm noting now. With a bit of raspberry <clears throat> and pardon me for my voice I'm getting over a, a yet another cold I think that's part of the fun of having very young children at home um, anyway on to the taste cheers everybody mmm very powerful very flavorful. You get a rush of sweetness, but it is very nicely balanced with tartness. Um, and I write here, it's warm and sweet, and then it is tangy and zippy. Um, and I'm getting some orange marmalade right off the hop. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then strawberry, raspberry, kind of like a coulis. So a, a cold blended sort of a version of, uh, of those fruits.
the palette is really dominated by sherry. I don't really notice, other than for the orange, I don't really notice any um, a vanilla or cinnamon or those types of typically um, American bourbon, ex-bourbon cask influence flavors. Um, mm -hmm, very nice. Anything else about that? No. How about the finish? Quite long. It does carry quite a while. Um, those red fruits remain. A little bit of dryness, some spiciness, also very tangy. Um, very mouth watering. This really makes me want to go back in and uh, have more, which I'm going to do. little bit of an oak um, warmth coming through also in the finish. Okay, so predominantly sherry. I've got these red fruits that are left in my mouth. Um, it's dry, it's quite long, and there's this hint of that oak warmth, which is nice. And I can still taste it now. Mmm. Great. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to go right into the water and thyme version. Now, can you see how nice and cloudy that is now? Again, Scottish mist is the term we should use. It's a positive thing. It's a good thing. That means that, um, that, means that it hasn't been diminished by a, an extra process. It's unprocessed. Um, you can kind of think of it this way. This is a little bit more refined. So think about like white sugar. Um, clean, sweet flavors. This would be more like the, uh, the raw sugar. So there's something a little bit, uh, a little bit earthy in there. Um, something a little bit uh, different about the taste, even though it's the same sugar. Okay. Anyway, all right, on to the nose uh, for the Macallan with water and thyme. We'll have another short word from the YouTube sponsors right here. Welcome back. Let's get on to that now. The nose with water and thyme. Mmm. Strawberry jam. Sweet raspberry jam. Oh, and I write here strawberry raspberry preserves, fruit leather, gummy worms, yes. I always come into gummy worms, the smell, not the taste, the smell of gummy worms when you open the package. Oh, it's sweet. It is gorgeous. Beautiful nose. I think I prefer the nose with water. Let's get on to the palate. Cheers again. Hmm. So smooth and so sweet. Very soft, very easy drinking. Um, and I write here straight up sweets and jams. A bit of vanilla creeps in. Something like uh, vanilla custard over red fruits with uh, some maybe some nutmeg uh, sprinkled in for a little bit of extra flavor. Hmm. You get a little bit of dryness coming in as well, which I think is, is welcome. The finish is also much drier with water than without. Um, same basic flavors, but just a bit drier. Now, 
I think a person who likes their whiskeys very uh, smooth and easy to drink and a little bit sweet, have that with water. But I think that if you are adventurous and you really want to get a sense of uh, a really good balance of sweet and tart and astringency of bitterness, I think uh, neat is the way to go uh, for the pal here, but you should try them both. Uh, because you never know, you may like them both, and you may want to experience have both experiences from the same glass. What a difference, hey? Totally different uh, in the color. Uh, this is uh, almost like an orange marmalade shade, and this is a yellow gold shade. Now, of course, I did add water, so that will lighten the shade a little bit. Um, but the uh, Scottish mist really makes that a different color altogether. Maybe you can see that if I, let's see how can I do that? Go like that and go like balancing act. I'm going to lose one of these. Okay. Yep. Lots, lots of noise. Okay. I don't know if, can you, can you get a sense of that at all? A difference in color? Anyway, I'm not as on the ball today with the paper. One at a time? Okay, we'll do one at a time. All right, so that is neat. Okay, and here is the one with water and time. Can you get a sense of the difference? I sure hope so. Anyway, both lovely. Uh, I think that... Um, I would probably drink this neat more often than with water, but again, I would probably drink most of it neat and then save a little bit to have with water just to get that that uh, that nose that I really enjoyed. Anyway, hmm. Oh yeah, that really just takes over your mouth. I like the finish more with uh, uh, without water also. That being said, anybody could enjoy that with water because it just it's just so smooth. Okay, so that's the review. Now, as you're aware, this is my 2016 Luxury NAS Whiskey of the Year. Um, on the Whiskey Whistle channel. So you can kind of expect what kind of score it's going to get. Uh, I'm going to give this 92 out of 100. That's the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for the Macallan 2nd edition. Edition number 2. I think I called that 2nd edition. Oh well. Edition number 2. Um, anyway, so uh, very, very excellent. Uh, edition number 2. 92 points out of 100. Um, Oh, I don't know what to what to call this one. Uh, this is the uh, the sherry, the spiced sherry king. That's the nickname for this one. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, do get a bottle if you like Macallan. I highly recommend this one. Yeah, it's NAS, uh, but let the whiskey do the talking. Okay, I think that you'll agree that this is uh, well worth it. I paid one hundred and fifty thousand won for it at E-Mart. Um, not sure if they have any left. Uh, you might be able to find some in Seoul here at Bars. E-Mart, that's a shop here, a big, big uh, hyper market here in Seoul, in Korea. Um, I think it's pretty readily available in the US. Not a lot was allotted here for Korea, so that's why it may be difficult to get, but uh, the pubs, the bars, uh, the better whiskey bars should have this available at least um, for a limited time. Okay, so go try that one. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm putting some new end of uh, end of video sort of uh, links here, so there'll be a little bit a little bit of a link here to subscribe. So click that if you haven't. And here are a couple of recommended videos for you to watch now. So thanks again, and we'll, we'll we will see you for review 142, which will be a 14 year old. Goodbye.